okay, <laughs> so I'm doing everything I need to do to get this thing prepared for closing. Um, I put, I've never done this before, so I'm kind of interpreting the plans as best I can and I'm trying to come up with the way I think it's supposed to work. So to that end, I've put uh, a bunch of blue painters tape down uh, in to include over this outward row or top row of rivet holes because those don't necessarily need to be um, pro sealed, although I probably will pro seal them anyways once I get this thing all put together. But uh, I've gone through and I've scrubbed the area where uh, where I'm going to be putting down the metal. I've scrubbed this. I need to go over it again with <laughs> acetone since I just touched it, you know, to get your oils and whatnot. But I'm going to go back through and I'm going to make sure that all the inside areas are completely sealed. And I'm going to take my time doing that because you only have one chance to close this tank. I'm not going to have access to the inside of this tank ever again, so I need to make sure I do this correctly. Uh, uh, once I'm done with that, once I get everything happy and I, and I, I, I pro seal all the things on the inside, specifically the other side of this plate, uh, that right there, those nut plates, those have to be screwed on. Um, I did go through and I tested the fuel sender. Um, the fuel sender is measured in ohms. It's just a resistance gauge basically and so I, I put my probes on there and I ran it up down full to empty to test the fuel sender to make sure it actually worked. It did. Good thing someone mentioned testing that. Uh, actually a couple of people mentioned testing that before sealing the tank because really it's a pain in the ass to change once you've sealed the tank. So uh, done that. Uh, I'm not sure if I need to like screw just to hang a wire off it on the outside or how and then just just pro seal the whole thing or what if someone knows please comment down below uh, but for now I'm just gonna I'm gonna uh, pro seal the inside those nut plates on the inside and then once we get a uh, a ruling on how to do pro you know correctly pro seal the outside I'll do that after the fact uh, what else that's it um, I'm really nervous about about sealing my tanks. Uh, it's it's this is something that has been coming for like over a year, and I'm nervous about it because I want to get it right. All right, today's the day, so I'm going to go over this one more time. I want to make sure I do it correctly. Um, it says here, step one. So this is page 18-8, where we talk about putting the pro seal on the back baffle and closing that sucker up. But it says here, apply sealant to the T1001 left fuel tank skin from the tank baffle rivet holes forward. Uh, upon installation of the tank baffle acts as a squeegee and a bead of sealant will be pushed ahead as the baffle is moved forward. This means I'm gonna put a bunch of pro seal on there because I, I want that squeegee, that bead to happen. Um, well, it says use a maximum of 3 16 inch bead of sealant, too much, and the thickness can start to build up, making the tank difficult to install on the wing. Uh, I've put blue painter's tape across there so that that actually would be um, prevented per uh, the suggestion of one of my viewers and a video they sent. Let's see. Put a bead of sealant along the inside edge of the flange on each rib obvious. And then put a heavy gob of sealant where each corner of the baffle will meet the end ribs. This is one of the most common locations for leaks. So the corners of each ribs. Okay, makes sense. <clears throat> um, let's see. Put a thin smear of sealant around each of the rivet holes on the back flanges of the tank ribs. I assume that's when I put a big smear on each of the tank ribs, uh, that will actually take care of that for me. And then with the tank sitting in the leading edge assembly cradle, install the rear baffle by dropping it straight down on the rear flanges of the ribs as shown. And then put a Clico in every hole of the tank, um, in the tank skin to the baffle joint. After Clicoing, inspect the skin to see if it's pillowed out beneath any of the Clicos. Uh, the contact surface of the tank baffle flange may require pressure to force out excess sealant. The easiest method to squeeze out the excess is to apply a C-clamp or strong spring clamp between each set of rivets. If you're unsure, clamp the flange with a couple of spots and see if it makes a difference. If I'm going to need 
rivet, or I mean uh, clamps between every single rivet, you're going to need like 200 clamps. So <laughs> hopefully I won't need that. Um, yeah, all right. Well, this is it, guys. Here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm closing this sucker up. Um, I am going to put some, uh, some Pro Seal on the inside around the fuel sensor uh, screws and whatnot to seal it from the inside before I do this close, but uh, then I'm going to go to town. So I'm going to use one of my big tubes, the six ounce tubes of sealant on this thing. Uh, it's not a waste. So I figured to heck with it. Let's do this thing. I'm also going to get all of the tank attach Z's, uh, make sure they're in correctly, uh, you know, so I know exactly which one goes where uh, before I do this thing. And um, yeah, wow. <sighs> okay, so what you guys are watching behind me is a four hour marathon. Um, I thought I'd try to explain a little bit of what's going on. Uh, I don't have the opportunity because I have very little time. I mean, this stuff is supposed to start setting in about two hours and it took me four hours to get all the rivets on. There's 85 rivets per side on that back baffle. It takes forever to get them all put in. Uh, and you know, you're in a hurry. You're trying to get it done. Um, so what I did is similar with the, uh, the internal structures, uh, you know, I put down the bead of pro seal. I smeared along using a popsicle stick. The inside was prepared beforehand. I, you know, I put down some blue painters tape to cover the areas where I didn't want any of the pro seal to get. And then I scarred it all up using, uh, uh some scotch bright pads that I have. You will use scotch bite pads, but you're not going to need a lot of them, but definitely get some. Um, then, like I said, once you smear it out with the popsicle stick, you get all the stuff ready. Don't forget to have all the rivets and things you need. Uh, I had to go hunt down some of the pop rivets for the, the connect Z connectors because I forgot them. And also make sure you know exactly which way the Z connectors go. I talked to that here in a sec. Uh, that's important. You need to make sure you have the Z, Z connectors going the right way or else one, it won't fit on the back or on the wing and two, you're going to have to drill those out and that would suck. Holy gosh. So anyways, make sure those are connected correctly. And then, you know, you drop that baffle in, uh, pushing that bead of pro seal before it, which they talked to in the plans. I talked to at the very beginning of this, uh, to know which way the baffle goes. You see this picture here, there's that middle hole. Uh, only one side has that center hole that kind of tells you which side is which, which is handy as heck. Thank you, Vans. To that end, I wish the Z baffles had that too, just so you know exactly which ones, uh, you know, which way it went. It just each, each one that went to the right had a, you know, a different hole than the ones that went to the left or something. I think that would, that would make, uh, the confusion around those a lot easier, but I'm sure remachining something like that would take probably more work than it's worth. Just pay attention to the plans. Um, once it's in, you get it all clicked in, you do the outer, uh, outer pop rivets of the Z's. And then you put a bead of uh, pro seal on the bottom of the Z. You put those in, you pro pop rivet those in. I am going to have to go back and use uh, some pro seal over the top of those to uh, just kind of make sure they're sealed. Uh, again, back to what my original assessment on pro seal is. I don't think you can really use too much. Uh, then it was just a matter of going and pulling all the, uh, the uh, Clecos out for the baffle and rivet them in one at a time. Oh, one, that's one tank. Uh, so it's sealed. I've gone through and I've looked at some of the other areas where I thought I needed to put more pro seal and I used a little bit, you know, what I had and kind of put a little goop on there just to make sure. But at this point, I'm going to stop. I'm going to screw in the, the various, uh, uh, you know, the connectors, the fuel cap and all that other stuff to actually physically seal it. I'm going to put a, uh, you know, a finger, what they recommend in the plan is you put a finger of a glove over each of the holes to make sure no nesting bug gets in there. I mean, the last thing you need is to have a mud dauber crawling in there, make a, make a nest while you're working on things. So I'm going to go ahead and do that while this thing sets. And then I'm going to wait until like three or four or five days or whatever to let the pro seal completely set and come out here and test it. And the way I understand testing it is basically you blow up the tank a little bit with just you know, like a pound of air and see if it holds the air. Wish me luck. I certainly hope it does um, because damn, this was a hell of a thing. Not too bad. Uh, again, as with all Pro Seal, I got it all over me. It seemed like every time I put my hand on the 
uh, put my hand on the tank, no matter where it was, I put my hand in Pro Seal. That's just how that works. Um, eh, what do you do? Uh, so anyways, guys, uh, I think that's where I'm going to end this one. Thank you all so much. I will give you an update around this tank to see if it's actually sealed uh, here in a day or two. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully it is, and then I'll just mirror everything on the other tank. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, if you do me a favor and hit that thumbs up over there, I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe if you want to get notifications, click the bell, and if you really want to help me out for as little as a dollar a month, you guys can join my Patreon campaign and send me a cup of coffee over the internet. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I have people all the time tell me that they really want to build a plane, but they're not sure if they can do it. You absolutely can do it. Reach out to Vans, look on their website, see which one of the kits you want. They've got lots of different kits, a lot that meets lots of different missions. Decide your mission first. I talked about that in a previous video. Uh, but once you do, if you use my builder number, when you order your plane, they send me a hundred bucks. It's just a referral and uh, lets me know you like what I'm doing on this channel. Thanks guys. <sighs> See you next time.